So we're going to focus today on some brand new features that have been added to Java relatively recently with the Java 19 release. And we'll talk first about Java platform threads versus Java virtual threads. And you'll get to see the differences between platform and virtual threads. And then we'll talk about the motivation for why you would want to have these two different types of threads. Traditionally, a Java thread has been an object that contains a bunch of methods and some internal fields that constitute its state. And some of the state you see in a Java thread would be the name of the thread, the identifier, which is not the same as the name. The name is a string. The identifier is a number. The priority, whether it's high priority, low priority, and so on. The runtime stack that's used to keep track of the activation records. Any thread local storage, instruction pointers, and other registers to use to execute the thread on a processor or a processor core. In Java 19 and henceforth, these types of threads are now referred to as so-called platform threads. And we'll talk about what a platform thread is. But think of a platform thread as basically a traditional Java thread. Each Java platform thread is commonly associated one-to-one -one with an operating system kernel thread, which means that when you spawn a thread, there's actually a corresponding set of resources allocated in the operating system kernel. The platform thread contains more or less essentially the same state, the usual unique state that a Java traditional thread has had. Platform threads can be used to execute pretty much anything. Uh, although they're mostly useful for now with, for I.O. related stuff. But you can use them for anything. However, the tricky issue with a platform thread is that they use a non-trivial amount of runtime stack size in the operating system kernel. And therefore, they become a limited resource. You can't have a million Java threads. That would start to slow things down. Even much less than a million threads on most platforms will start to slow things down quite a bit. In contrast, Java virtual threads are lightweight concurrency objects. So if a platform thread's got all the muscles and the capabilities and so on, the resources, a Java thread is a much more slimmed down version of a platform thread. In particular, it's a user thread rather than a kernel thread, which means it's running in so-called user space. We'll talk more about that in a second, as opposed to the kernel, which means there's a lot fewer resources that are being allocated on its behalf when you create one. And moreover, a virtual thread is scheduled by the Java execution environment, the Java virtual machine, the Android runtime, or whatnot, although Android does not support virtual threads yet, if ever, rather than the underlying operating system kernel. A very large number of virtual threads can therefore for be created. If you ever watched the Austin Powers series, you know that Dr. Evil always said, one billion. So it might be hard to have one billion threads, virtual threads, although you probably could if you had enough memory on your computer. Virtual threads are multiplexed atop something known as a pool of carrier threads. And you can read more about these concepts here in this link down below. But basically, think of a carrier thread as kind of a pool of platform threads upon which virtual threads are multiplexed. And one of the things you can see here is that a given carrier thread at any given point in time can have different virtual threads running on it. And you can see the different states that these threads can be in. They can be running. They can be waiting. They can be waiting to run. They can be blocked, and so on and so forth. And they are multiplexed atop the carrier thread. And one of the things that took a while to finish implementing in the operating system, or the Java virtual machine and the Java execution environment, was to make it so that blocking operations, things like blocking on network I.O., or blocking on reads, or writes, or whatever, don't actually block the executing thread, but instead simply block, in quotes, the virtual thread by essentially moving it off to the side to be reconstituted and resumed later when it's capable of running. So you can have a very large number of virtual threads making requests in parallel with a very small number of carrier threads. Right now, the Java fork join framework is used to implement carrier threads. So you can have gobs and gobs of virtual threads, which are actually implemented under the hood as fork join tasks. We talked about those in the context of Java parallel streams earlier. And there's a pool of fork join worker threads, which are actually platform threads in the new parlance that run all those virtual threads. 
So let's talk about some ways of creating platform threads versus ways of creating virtual threads. And you can see here that the Java platform thread can be created in two different ways. One is the traditional way, where you define some class that extends thread, and you can go ahead and make a new thread of that type and then start it. That's, that's the old-fashioned way of doing things. Likewise, you can make a runnable, and you can go ahead and make a new thread, just a new Java thread, which is a platform thread, by the way. Uh, and then you can run a runnable on that. So this, this is not anything different than what we've seen for many decades now. And the thing to remember is that Java thread objects, the, the traditional new thread thing, are relatively heavyweight if you do it the old-fashioned way. You can also do things the Java 19 way. And by the way, Java 19 supports threads just like we did before. So you can do exactly what you did before. That's a very familiar way to do stuff. By default, a traditional Java thread is a platform thread if you do the old API. However, you can also do things in a more flexible way by saying thread.ofplatform, and then you can go ahead and start a thread. So you can say of platform, which makes a platform thread. It's obviously a factory method. And you can say, please start and run this GCD runnable. So this is one of the new ways of doing things. Why is this more flexible, you ask? Well, you can also go ahead and say, make me a platform thread, give it a runnable, but don't start it yet, please. And if you do that, you can then later dot, 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 start the thread. So you can create a bunch of threads that are not started, and you can start them at some later point. Platform threads are also relatively heavyweight because they're basically the same as traditional threads, just repackaged in a slightly different, somewhat more flexible way. Virtual threads are really the interesting stuff, and that's what we're going to focus on here. So one way to start a virtual thread is super concise. You just say thread.start virtual thread and give it a runnable, which we're showing here. So that's a really simple, concise way of being able to create a new virtual thread. You can also say thread.ofvirtual, use a factory method to start a runnable running. So that's more flexible. Why is it more flexible? It's more flexible because we can also say thread.ofvirtual.unstarted and make ourselves a virtual thread with a runnable. And then later, we can start it. So it's more flexible. We'll see that again when we look at the example in the case study in a minute. Unlike Java platform threads, Java virtual threads are relatively lightweight, which means we can have lots and lots and lots of them. And remember, they're multiplexed atop a smaller number of so-called carrier threads, which are platform threads that actually carry the threads and do the work and multiplex all the fork join task implementations of the virtual threads atop the worker threads. Again, keep in mind that is the current implementation. Don't be surprised if this changes in future releases of Java from an implementation point of view. But knock on wood, the ideas and the concepts of platform threads and virtual threads will perpetuate over time. So that's the end of the overview of Java platform threads versus Java virtual threads.